Hi, it's Dwyer. It's October 13th, 2024, the day after the Beterbiev Beevil Battle of Unbeatens. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. In this video, we're just going to talk about the issue of legacy and what Beevil should do going forward. Now, this afternoon, I was watching some NFL afternoon games at a sports bar. And a fellow sports fan came over, and we had a good conversation about what Beevil should do next. Now, the issue of legacy is a big issue. I believe more people should think about it. If you're just about the money, if you're a fighter and all you want are the paydays for as long as they last, then you can disregard this video. But if you are interested in having a legacy, walking in a room and having some people whispering in the corner of the room, there's the real champion. That guy fought the best and gave as good as he got. That's the guy. He's the best of his generation. There's my guy. He's the guy who ruled the roost from year X to year Y. If you're that guy, if you want to make the Hall of Fame, if you want to be a guy who the public believes took big fights, won your share, held your own, then I hope you consider what I have to say in this video. Staying too long at the party can actually hurt your legacy. Right? Boxing is a young man's game. Right? Rule out the heavyweight division. That's a different universe. For most divisions, you understand that once you get past the age of 32, unless you're defensively blessed, you're on borrowed time. Right? Let me make a point here. Years ago, there was a fighter, Roy Jones. Right? Now, I'm not saying Jones was perfect. Far from it. Right? Roy Jones in the pocket. If you could pin him up against the ropes, even prime Roy Jones, Jones had problems. Right? Jones was the guy who was a freak athlete who had blinding hand speed and feints, and he operated better with a little bit of a cushion between you and him. But Roy Jones won the Olympic gold medal. They robbed him. They gave him the silver, even though they named him the best fighter of those Olympic Games. So Jones had an aura about him. Then, of course, Jones hit the big time and went on a tear. Right? He beat people like James Toney, Mike McCallum, Virgil Hill. He was really exemplary. So Jones then topped himself. It's a moment in time many of us remember. Very few fighters hit this height. Jones gained weight and fought for the heavyweight championship. If you believe the folklore... For the weigh-in, Jones had coins in his pocket, so people wouldn't know how light he was when he fought for the heavyweight title. Now, we can debate the fight. John Ruiz, the champion at the time, complained that the referee would not allow him to fight inside, right? I'm sure there are many conversations at your local bar about what happened in that fight. But Roy Jones won the heavyweight title. Now, I'm just telling you that if Roy Jones had stepped away from the sport at that moment in time, right, with only one debatable loss, he has Montel Griffin on the canvas and he hits Montel while he's on the canvas and gets disqualified. That was his loss. Had Roy Jones walked away, we would be talking about Jones among the very best fighters in boxing history, right? His name would have been mentioned with some greats, 
but Jones kept fighting. So understand the memory of Roy Jones is clouded with a loss to Antonio Tarver, a loss to Joe Calzaghe, a loss to Glenkoff Johnson. Right, Jones fell off a bit. Now we will overlook the last chapter, right? People aren't spending a lot of time on Ali against Trevor Burback. We'll overlook the last chapter somewhat. But understand, that air of invincibility that Roy Jones had after he beat John Ruiz was gone for good. Right, Jones, of course, made the Hall of Fame. He was that level of fighter. But he's not in the conversation with some of the men who walked away on top. Ray Robinson, right? Before his return, this is boxing, right? He does return. He does get beaten by people like Gene Fulmer. But understand, Ray Robinson, who gains weight, decides to fight for the light heavyweight championship, fights Joey Maxim, is winning the fight. The referee has to be replaced mid-fight because of heat exhaustion. And then, of course, Robinson himself succumbs to heat exhaustion, right? As Joey Maxim fam famously put it, you know, hey, I was in the same ring too. Well, let's just say this. Jones would have been thought of the way Ray Robinson is thought of. But he lost that by continuing to fight. Maybe if Jones had taken a couple years off and then come back and we all understood that this was a second act like we did with Ray Robinson, maybe he would have been placed on the same plateau. But he wasn't. Let's talk about Dimitri Bevel. Now I need for folks to understand, as I said earlier here, that boxing is a young man's game. Marvin Hagler walks away at 32 years old. Andre Ward walks away at 33 years old. Now I was in a bar just moments ago. A boxing fan was telling me that he thought Ward left a lot of money on the table. Right? A lot of money on the table. Understand, Ward officially retires unbeaten. Right? I'm sure there are many conversations in many bars about that first Kovalev fight. But Ward officially leaves unbeaten. Right? Hagler, of course, for his last fight, enters the ring as the middleweight champion. Understand, Hagler's loss to Bray Leonard is still hotly debated to this day. Right? Let's talk about Dimitri Bevel. Since the Bevel fight, and Bevel's 33, understand, your legs are the first to go. Right? Long time saying in boxing. Your power is the last to go. A Zhili Zhang, a George Foreman, they can hang around and still be very effective. They only have to be right once. That's not Bevel's game. Bevel's not a one-shot guy. Bevel is a combination fighter. Bevel is relying on his legs, on his reflexes, on his movement. Now let me say, you can be a clean liver, right? You can be the guy saying, no, no, no alcohol for me. Uh, what time is it? 8.30. I'm going to bed. You know, let me get some protein shakes and let me, uh, you know, make sure I'm not getting too many carbs or too many fat calories. You could be that guy. But in your 30s, that wears off over time. Let me also make a point here, and this was controversial at the bar. Let me make the point again here. You can do well in the first fight as, and I'm using a recent example here, Fraser Clark knows well. 
you could do good in the first fight. If you're facing a puncher, particularly one whose best part of your fight was the later rounds, there's no guarantee that you're going to do well in the rematch. Right? Just understand. Rematches are different animals. So let's say you are Dimitri Bevel. You've already beaten Canelo. You entered this fight with a share of the title at 175 pounds. You've already beaten the guy who is currently reigning at cruiserweight, Gilberto Ramirez. Right? And of course, you've beaten other fighters who've held a championship. Right, Jean Pascal. So you're here, you're unbeaten. You've beaten a sure fire first ballot Hall of Famer in Canelo. Right? A fight you went into as the underdog. Now you've just fought this fight. This fight against Baturbiev. And understand, entering this fight, Baturbiev had never gone the distance in a pro fight. He had a perfect 100% KO ratio. Whatever we think of the fight, you're the one guy. The one guy to go the distance with Paterbiev. You. Now understand the fan club you have right now. You heard me mention Andre Ward. He thinks you were robbed in the fight. You heard me mention Sean Porter. He thinks you won eight rounds. Josh Taylor thought the fight was close but would have given it to you. Tony Bellew believes you won the fight. In other words, folks, there's a boxing cognoscenti out there. There are accomplished fighters out there who feel you were robbed. In other words, if this fight comes up for discussion at a pub or a gym, they're going to be a sizable group who believe you got ripped off. Now I understand, we're here thinking about equity and many people are saying this is unfair. Right, particularly when one judge had it 116-112, which is preposterous. Right, but I need for folks to understand that it's those fights. And I mean it. It's those fights that stay with us. I had heard as a kid that Jersey Joe Walcott got robbed when he fought Joe Lewis. I didn't get a chance to see that fight until the internet came around and fights started being posted on the net. I'm not kidding. In other words, I heard about the fight, then it was several years later that I actually got an opportunity to see the fight. Right? Another fight like this was the rematch. Larry Holmes against Ernie Shavers, where Shavers knocks Holmes down. I had heard about it, but I hadn't seen it. It was YouTube that gave me the opportunity. Folks, I'm just telling you that in those moments, the long count, Jack Dempsey, Gene Tunney, it's these controversial moments that introduce your game and your career to a whole group of fans. So let's be clear here. As I said in an earlier video, I thought Bevel won the fight. Apparently, quite a few people thought Bevel won the fight. He was fighting a future Hall of Famer. That's who Baturbiev is. Who had a perfect record. 100% knockout efficiency. That's gone. Now, of course, you have a sizable group out there who believe he shouldn't have gotten the decision, right? Even though nobody, not one judge, had Bevo winning the fight, right? It's a draw, and then two guys who thought Paterbiev won the fight. Well, let me just say, 
if you're 33 years old in a dangerous sport, and when I say a dangerous sport, I'm telling you some of the greats, and I'm talking about great fighters from the 70s and early 80s, guys who at the time you thought, well, when this guy retires, he'll seamlessly move to the booth. Right? Those guys aren't boxing analysts because of slurred speech. Because the sport took away something from them. And you can't quite understand what the guy is saying part of the time. Right? I'm just telling you some of the best fighters I've seen have problems. The sport of boxing is that unforgiving. So if I'm Dimitri Bevel, at 33 years old, without the kind of break that a Ray Leonard got, right? Ray Leonard doesn't fight for years, plural, in the 80s. Years. Without the break that George Foreman got, right? Foreman's out of the sport for years. Right? If I'm Dimitri Bevel at 33, and I understand Bevel doesn't have that many fights, but after this fight, where a sizable group feel that he fought the toughest guy, unbeaten guy, at 175 pounds, an established champion, a guy who went to the UK to fight Anthony Yard, goes to the New York City area to fight Joe Smith, follows that up with a match against Callum Smith. Against that guy, people thought Bevel held his own. In my opinion, know when to say when. If I'm Dimitri Bevel with an understanding that Eddie Hearn has publicly said that His Excellency wants a rematch between these two with the understanding that there are millions of dollars on the table where you have another surefire first ballot Hall of Famer Canelo who would love to get a rematch against you. If I'm Dimitri Bevel, this is when I walk away from the sport. Right folks, the sport's dangerous. For Bevel to maintain his reputation, which is top notch, he would have to fight the most dangerous people out there. Baturbiev again. Canelo again. The winner of Morel Benavides. Right? Because if he's fighting someone who isn't at that level we're going to question the fight we're going to say oh uh, Bevel's taking an off fight here right he's he's taking a payday here our expectations of him are elevated because he's been fighting the Canelos and the Perturbiavs and the Ramirez's of the world let me also say, too, what's the upside other than millions of dollars? And I don't dispute that in the slightest. But what's the upside of having the rematch against Peturbiev? Didn't Bevel just give the best performance that he could give against this opponent? Right, folks, in my opinion, and please, you can disagree with me in the comment section of this YouTube video. Trust me, the guy at the bar disagreed with me. Um, but to me, this is the best outcome Bevel could have. Right? In my eyes, he beat Baturbiev. We need to watch Baturbiev closely because I'm telling you, when you get decisions that you yourself question and understand at the end of this fight, the Bevel corner is hugging each other. Everyone's happy. The Baturbiev corner, not so much. Right? One of Chris Mannix's questions to Baturbiev after the fight was, 
what his reaction was to his corner telling him in about round 10, you need a knockout to win the fight. Right? Be careful because a lot of guys can't handle gifts. Right? But Terbiev, don't get me wrong. The fight, if it were ruled a draw, okay, I would have been able to sleep at night. Right? It's a competitive fight. I have no knock on any fighter who gives his best um, is ferocious in the later rounds, does what he can to try to win the fight. But understand, Baturbiev has given some interviews after this fight where he's saying, hey, I don't really think of myself as that great a fighter. I think he understands at a minimum that this fight could have gone the other way. Right? This fight's going to have fallout both ways. Be very careful in analyzing both fighters. But if I'm Bevo, at 33 years old, a fighter who relies on speed, coordination, foot movement, the very things that diminish early with age, if I'm him, I seriously consider walking away from the sport right here. Folks, we still talk about Hagler Leonard, don't we? Right? Marvin Hagler walked away from the sport, flirted with the idea of fighting Ray Leonard again, didn't get the offer he wanted, went to Italy, was acting in movies, was living his life, right? Because understand, he had been a professional prize fighter, and that lifestyle is unforgiving. You have to make weight. You have to stay in shape. You have to spar against other professional fighters. You have to keep your edge. That's demanding. So Hagler leaves the sport. He enjoys life a little bit. Then he comes back to the sport. And of course, the sport welcomed him back as a VIP, right? Someone who you would notice in the crowd at fights. Someone who interviewers wanted to interview because Hagler had been there, done that. Because people wanted to find out what it was like to fight John the Beast Mugabe, Alan Minter, Mustafa Hampshire, Juan Rodin, Thomas the Hitman Hearns, Roberto Duran, Ray Leonard. And here was a guy who had done it all. That's the position Beevil's in right now. Right? Boxing always has room for that Hall of Fame fighter who represents an era, who promoters want to have at fights. I was watching a fight um, from Saudi Arabia, and I knew the event was big, but the event topped itself when they showed the crowd, and there was one of my guys. Larry Holmes. And I thought, wow, they got Larry at this fight? Suddenly the event had that extra glow. Folks, that's the position Beevil is in right now. Why risk it? If he fights Baturbiev in another fight, and let's say Baturbiev stops him, I'm telling you, we're going to forget about this fight somewhat. This fight won't have the gravitas that it has right now. What's the consensus on Beevil? That he was undisputed. That he fought the best. That he held his own. That he could have been awarded this decision based on what he did. Right? Understand, too, you're going to have future generations sit down with the film of this fight. And they're going to be talking to each other. And they're going to notice first two minutes of the first round... Baturbiev doesn't throw his right hand. He loses the first round. He loses the second round. Then you're going to look at the middle of the fight. A period where in real time, Timothy Bradley was saying, hey, Beevil's taking too many chances. This is as it happened. Beevil's taking too many chances. Beevil should tie up Baturbiev. Beevil is being too aggressive. You're going to notice Beevil opening up with combination punching. You're going to notice Beevil being much more efficient, missing a lot less shots 
than Beterbiev, right? Then you're going to have the last four rounds. The question's going to be, did Beterbiev do enough to win these last four rounds? You have another question, and we should thank the 116-112 judge. Is this fight a draw going into the ninth round? What fight was that guy watching? If you can't answer that question, then this fight will always have an air of mystery. So if I'm Bevel, I seriously consider retirement. I might call up Andre Ward. Say, hey player, you retired at 33, you still had a lot of game, you beat other Hall of Famers. Let's remember, he beats the Cobra, Carl Frotch. Right, he beats Mikael Kessler. Right, if I'm Bevel, I talk to him and I say, hey, how much do you regret possibly leaving some money on the table? Let me just say too, let's be clear on boxing. Promoters are always going to come up to you because they want successful promotions. And they're going to say, hey, player, you signed this bottom line right here. This young guy, he can't mess with you. This is an easy way to make five, ten, fifteen million dollars, right? You and I understand that at some point you're going to have to say no because the sport's unforgiving, right? I'm not kidding, by the way, when I say that I was raised in a house where Joe Lewis was a saint. And of course, whenever that Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano fight was on TV, my father had me hop up and turn the channel, even though that fight featured two Hall of Famers because an older Lewis got knocked out of the ring. Right? Fighters want to retire before they're in that situation. Let me also say, too, they claim you're leaving money on the table, and no doubt you are. But when you're a VIP in boxing, folks, you're getting VIP treatment, right? You don't think Ray Leonard has paid for a ticket at any time over the last 20 years to a boxing event, do you? Right? You don't think that Ray Leonard is paying for his airfare or his hotel room when you see him at fights in Saudi Arabia or Canada or wherever that he has to travel to. You understand when you are at the top of the game, people are opening doors for you. Not only that, trainers, managers want you involved in their operation. Right? It's almost like being on the board of one of these Fortune 500 companies. It's the people who are distinguished who get these easy board invitations. Because, of course, the company wants to benefit from their high profile, their reputation. So, at the bar, they thought I was crazy. Whatever. Right? <laughs> you know, whatever. Let's just say, if I'm Dimitri Bevel and I'm 33... Not 23, not 28. I'm 33 years old. In a tough sport where there's always going to be a Diego Pacheco out there. Some young guy who's up and coming, who believes he's the future, who wants to prove he's the future by fighting the fighters he thinks are the present. When I'm in this unforgiving sport, where the goal of the game is to give an opponent a concussion. If I'm 33 and I've just laid down a performance for the ages that's going to be discussed in bars 5, 10, 15 years from now. Where there's a group, long-time boxing guys. It includes Hall of Famers who believe I won this fight or who, at a minimum, believe that the 116, 112 scorecard wasn't credible where I know there are moments in this fight where I open up with both hands and I'm landing solid combinations 
where I'm going to be reputationally paid a dividend. If Baturbiev continues on, and Baturbiev is supposed to be a guy who lives a Spartan lifestyle. He's all about boxing. Clean liver. He's not at the bar. He's not sitting next to Ricky Hatton. This isn't the boxer who's out on the town. He's not Carlos Monzon, right? This is the guy who's highly disciplined. Just understand, every time Baturbiev knocks out another boxer, Bevel's name's going to come up. They're going to say, wow, who's the one guy to go the distance with him? Bevel, you remember that fight. Who do you think won that fight? So if I'm Bevel, in a sport that's a young man's game, that also has danger, if I'm Bevel, I'm seriously considering walking away right here. I made a mint off the Canelo fight. I made a mint off this fight. Right, folks, I'll just tell you, the deals that pay you a lot of money at the end are sometimes the most expensive deals you'll ever be involved with. Right, if I'm Bevel, I walk away right here. I was on the world stage. Everyone knows what I'm about. I was unbeaten going into the fight. They're saying that I have one loss in a fight where some great fighters believe I won seven or eight rounds. Terence Crawford, after the fight, asked the question, who do you think won this fight? Folks, some great fighters are asking the question. The minute they're doing so, after a 12-round blood and guts fight, you've won. You've proven, at a minimum, you've proven that you can hang with a guy with a 100% KO ratio and be the first man to go the distance with him. So let me hear from you. Um, I personally will be disappointed if Beevil agrees to a Baturbi of rematch. Understand, even if Beevil were to win a Baturbi of rematch, it's really going to be uphill because let's say he fights the same fight. Let's say you have an identical fight as the fight you just had. Let's say there are no surprises. Then they say, oh, Beevil won. In my opinion, the boost to his image would be marginal, right? It wouldn't be that great. Right now, we already know Beevil's competitive against Perturbiev. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Again, let's remember... Bevel today is older than Marvin Hagler was when he walked away from the sport of boxing. Right? Just understand, in terms of legacy, I believe Bevel has already shown us that he's one of the sport's great fighters. He went into the fight as the favorite. That's the last betting line he was in. During the fight, he got as high as a minus 180 on the live betting line. So we already know him. In my opinion, he has little else to prove. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. If he stays in the game and he gets stopped by Baturbiev in a rematch. Then he continues on. Lord knows we've seen this, folks, in boxing. Just look at Ali. And he gets stopped again. I can't even watch that Larry Holmes-Ali fight, by the way. Right? Let's say he gets stopped again. His legacy won't be the same. Lock it in at 33, an older age, by leaving the sport now. Those are my thoughts. I look forward to reading yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.